then you come close and it's like, ah, oh, she's got glitter on her cheeks. Oh, I love it. I love it. The finger. So, oh my. I, I, I just don't really like them. Yes, give us nothing. <laughs> so I'm just editing this video back. And I've noticed that I have something in my teeth. For the whole video. Enjoy! Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I've got another full face of impressions. Full face of impressions? Full face of first impressions. I've got some Fenty, I've got some Revolution, I've got Rare Beauty, which is very exciting. I've got Laura Massier, Kiko, I've got NARS, I've got a mixture of drugstore and high end. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you subscribe, but you don't have to. But if you are watching this video and you do like it, please give it a thumbs up to let me know. Let me know what you think down below in the comments and let's just get into it. Honestly, like no matter how much I blow dry my hair smooth these little frizzy bits will always just pop back up so you know what i've never actually tried the fenty primer i was going through my drawers of like new stuff that i potentially want to test in videos and i found this primer and realized that i don't think i've ever tried the fenty primer and then as well another foundation that a lot of you guys have actually been asking me to test for a while now is the conceal and glow foundation from revolution i've got two different shades here i've got f3 and f5 i did try f4 but it was quite pink so i think i'll probably end up going with f5 i think this is like a little sample size of the fenty primer i really like the packaging oh okay because the the packaging is this sort of like soft focus type finish i thought that it was going to be one of those like smoothing silicone type primers but it actually is more of a creamy gel consistency mm. by the way little skin update my skin has not been this good and this sort of eczema free in months i would say something that has absolutely like changed the game for now because I feel like my skin, you know, goes through phases. Sometimes it seems to sort of get used to products that help it. But I started using the Eucerin Urea Cream, the 5% one. Oh my God. I've been using it for like three days straight, morning and evening. And it has just pretty much completely got rid of all the dry patches that were on my skin. I still have a little bit around my eyes, but like I had dryness all around here. Like on my forehead, I had this big patch, which, and most of that is pretty much gone now. And the only thing that I changed in my skincare routine was that. So highly recommend that if you do have like really dry bits of skin. That Fenty Primer feels really nice. It feels moisturizing, but not too moisturizing. It doesn't feel oily. It's sort of got a soft matte type finish, but it doesn't feel dry. It feels a little bit sort of tacky, which I quite like. I really like that. Why have I never tried this before? Okay, so the Revolution Conceal and Glow Illuminating Foundation, medium to full coverage, vitamin C, lotus flower extract. So this foundation, um, it looks like the same sort of packaging as their Conceal and Define. Oh, okay. It's actually quite, seems a bit more runny than the original Conceal and Define. Obviously this one is supposed to be more glowy. And because I have been enjoying a more glowy finish recently, Recently. a lot of you guys have actually asked if I've tried this, what I think of it, and I've never actually tried it before until now. So I just used the shade F5. Okay. You know what? It's actually a lot thinner than I was expecting because the Conceal and Define foundation is so thick and <laughs> why did I say it with such emphasis? Because it is such a thick foundation like the original one. I almost thought that this one would be the same but just like glowy, but it's actually a lot more of a thin consistency, which I much prefer. Okay, what the heck? This is actually looking really nice. I've had this sitting in a box for ages and I sort of didn't try it for a while because I don't know, I was just a bit scared that it would be a bit too thick or maybe even too glowy, but this looks beautiful. And I don't think it has any sort of actual shimmer in it because one of the, there's an XX Revolution foundation that's a glowy foundation that actually has like little bits of glitter in it. From what I can see, this one doesn't. It's just a lot more dewy and that actually looks beautiful. It's not overly, again, like it's not overly glowy to the point where you'd be like, whoa, you look like an oil slick kind of thing. It just looks like a really nice radiant finish. I would definitely say that it's more medium coverage than full because as you can see, I've got like an acne scar here, a little like blemish on my chin, a little blemish here like in my smile line which is the most frustrating thing ever but at least when i smile you can't see it that finish is beautiful and you know what a foundation that i've been using a lot recently is the rimmel it used to be called the wake me up foundation it's now called like the illuminating radiance foundation or something like that i've been using that one a lot recently and really liking it but that one does have little bits of glitter in it this one sort of reminds me of that but just without the glitter i think that looks beautiful my skin looks so 
smooth. I would imagine that because it is a more sort of like, like glowy foundation, it's probably not gonna last on my skin as long when I start getting oily, but nothing a bit of powder can't fix, I'm sure. I will continue to test this, and if I like it, you will see it in future videos, but so far I'm impressed. Very nice. For my concealer, I've got this brand which is called Sculpted by Amy, and I've tried one of their primers in a video before. I've also got their foundation, which I'm yet to test. They do a glowy and a matte foundation. This is their Brighten Up Under Eye Liquid Concealer. They also have a cream concealer, but I'm just more of a liquid concealer type of person, like especially around my eyes, much prefer liquid concealer. So this is it's a weightless feel concealer with a blurring and brightening effect and I've got the shades golden and beige okay that one is the shade golden that looks like a pretty good match so this one is beige and this one is golden beige is slightly lighter and golden is obviously slightly darker oh I don't know which one to go for yeah I think I'll go for beige actually Okay, a lot comes out on the doe foot and it's just like a big basic doe foot. Oh wow, you got a lot of product on here, which is quite a good thing because I hate concealers where you just have to dip in like 500 times. I've been breaking out a lot like around my jaw, like rat, like on my neck kind of, which is a bit frustrating. I'm glad I went for that shade. I think the other one might have been a bit too dark. Ooh. It's definitely a very liquid concealer. Well, obviously it is a liquid concealer, but what, what I mean by that is it spread very easily. It feels quite thin. Like I said, it does feel very lightweight. However, as you can probably see there, it hasn't given me full coverage. I would say it's more of like a, oh God, this spot is very annoying. It's definitely not quite a full, full coverage concealer, but it feels really nice under my eyes. It feels very lightweight, which I actually really like. But that spot is driving me insane. Don't do what I do. I just, I just squeezed it because it was like driving me crazy and it looked like it needed to be squeezed. Don't do that though when you're doing your makeup. Although, okay, if any like dermatologists or any skincare people are watching this video, let's just please ignore that I did that. <laughs> but also as well, if you're watching this, don't act like you've never squeezed a spot when you're like mid doing your makeup because you're like, no, that one needs to be squeezed. Is anyone else finding this okay? I think because I've been inside a lot more than usual in the past year, my eyes seem to have become a lot more sensitive to sunlight. And I don't know whether I'm just going crazy, but every time I go outside, my eyes just water like crazy to like wind, to sunlight, everything. My eyes, as soon as I step out the door, they like start running. I also think it's a bit of a hay fever thing, but also like, I don't know. We had a dog training session today and I was trying to look at the lady and I was just like squinting into the sun like I can't keep my eyes open. Like we've been inside so long that I seem to have turned into a vampire and I just can't be in the sunlight so that's great. This is from the Kiko Mood Boost collection which looks really nice. I do love Kiko's limited collections. They're normally like better than their standard products in my opinion. So this is a uh, the, uh, wait what? Did I just say what it is? The Perfecting Powder. Packaging looks like this. It looks pretty cool. And then on the inside it sort of looks like a swirly cupcake icing thing and it doesn't look like a completely matte powder. Oh my god. What? Can you hear this? That is the weirdest, most lightweight feeling powder I've ever felt. Oh my God, it feels like that Topshop powder that I used to like a while ago that was really, really thin. Okay, now I'm excited. So I'm just taking some on this brush and I'm just gonna set my under eyes, but I'm not gonna set the rest of my face at the moment. Oh, that went in my eyeball. This is the thinnest powder. But the reason that I'm not setting my face just yet is because I have some new cream products to test. This one is very bougie. This is the Patrick Tarte Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. I've got the shade She's statuesque and in here there's this little like window that you lift if i can do it without poking my nails into it and you get the cream product in here and then the powder product underneath which i think is a really cool idea and i like how they have the little separating bit there's a patrick tar blush that i absolutely love like his products are expensive but the ones that i've tried are really nice and oh my gosh that cream contour is actually a really nice color i don't really know like which is the easiest method to do it to pick it up on my brush first and then put it on my cheeks or to put it on my cheeks and then use my brush Okay, you know what? I'm gonna take some on my finger. It's actually quite a cool toned colour. It's definitely more of a contour than a bronzer. But then I think the bronzer is sort of underneath it, so... I know it is a cream contour, but I think for me, because I'm so used to using a cream bronzer or something a little bit more warm toned, this for me is almost a bit too cool tone to the point where I feel like I look at it looks a little bit muddy. It's also very very light not much um color is sort of coming off which I guess is a good thing because it's buildable but I don't know I'm not really sure about this. Can you even see it? 
I don't really think it's picking up that well, but I don't want to keep piling it on because it looks quite grey. In all honesty, like it looks a little bit grey. I'm not the biggest fan of that. Maybe I just need a different shade because the formula of it is really nice and really like, you know, it blends nicely, but this colour is just sort of giving a grey tinge to my foundation. I mean, I'm just going to use a bit down my nose because I think it would be quite a good shade for nose contour because I normally do my nose contour way too warm because I can't be bothered to like do a separate contour. Okay, yeah, that's a really good shade for nose contour because it's just like a very natural shadow, which is obviously what contour is supposed to be. Okay, well, I like it on my nose. I will also use the powder bronzer in a minute. For my blush, I have the NARS, what are these called? Air Matte Blushes. I've had these sitting in the drawer for ages, haven't used them yet in a video, just haven't got around to it, but I'm so excited to try these because I love my cream blushes these days. So I've got the shade Orgasm, which is obviously like their original shade of everything. We've got Rush, which is this gorgeous peachy, peachy pink. And then, okay, whoa, that one's a bit too bright. This one is Darling, which is like a more pink toned pink. This one's slightly more orange. So I think I am gonna go for this one, which is called Rush. It might be a little bit much, but we'll try it. So I've just dipped my brush in. Hello, where is the pigment? Why, okay, what is going on? There we go. I just don't think I got enough on my brush. But then it's almost blending away into nothing. I'm trying a different brush. Okay, yeah, look, when I first put this on, it's really intense, but then it really, really shears out. Or does it? Okay, on that side, it's not shearing out. <laughs> Something here is taking off my foundation, and I don't know whether that was the blush, whether that was the contour. I don't think that blush was mixing particularly well with the cream contour that I've got on underneath it. Also, I think maybe it could be having a couple issues because it's a matte product, and obviously my foundation is a glowy formula. Maybe the formulas aren't quite mixing that well, but I've managed to sort of salvage it just by blending it. Blending it carefully again over, you know, the, the bits that looked a little bit patchy, but I think, I think that was down to the cream contour that was sort of like sitting on top of my foundation. That colour is really pretty, but I do think, yeah, this would probably work better if you were using a matte foundation because it is supposed to be a matte blush. That colour though is gorgeous, I, I will say that. So I am just going to set the rest of my face with this weird, like, flaky Kiko powder. Okay, I don't know, I don't know why I just use the words flaky. It's not flaky, it's just like really, really thin. An unusual feeling, but it feels incredibly lightweight on my face, which is quite nice. I'm not setting my eyelids yet because I do have some eyeshadow. I definitely will continue to use this cream blush. It's not as scary as it looks in the thing. And you can put quite a lot of product on, but then it still blends out quite sheer. But I am also just gonna go in with a bit of the powder bronzer, the Patrick Tar one. Because I love doing a combination. If I want to make a little bit more effort with my makeup, I will use a combination of cream and powder products. Because sometimes people ask in the comments, like, what's the point in you doing cream if you're just gonna use powder? I just like the combination of the two of them together. Ooh, this bronzer is really, really nice color. And it's not too dark. It's very sheer and buildable. It almost looks like it has a tiny bit of a sheen. That has built up beautifully. It's sort of just melted into my skin. Okay, I really like the powder bronzer side of that. And I'm just gonna break all the rolls and use a bronzer to contour my nose again. Add a bit more to that. And then in part of the Kiko Radiant, wait, what's this called? Mood Boost Collection. This is the Radiant Blush in 02 Coral Sun, Coral? Coral? Did I just turn American? Coral Sunset. Sorry, that was probably a terrible American accent. Um, it's got the same packaging as the powder, but just hot pink. And this is the shade of the blush. I did swatch it. It's quite dark and very shimmery. So I'm just gonna add a little bit, almost like a blush topper. Mm, I love the smell of all of Kiko's products. Okay, that's not as scary as I thought. In the pan, it looks quite dark, but I think it's just in contrast to the packaging. You just use a very small amount. That's actually really pretty. It's going really well so far. I'm then using the Fenty Beauty Diamond Bomb in Royal Icing. I think this was a limited edition one around Christmas time, but I never actually got around to testing this in a video. And I saw this in my drawer today and was like, I have to put this on my face. These Diamond Bombs are very extremely like glittery and it doesn't look like a natural glow let's put it that way um with the ones that i've tried before anyway so i am just gonna take some of this on my brush if i can even pick it up on my brush hello and i think you just need a very small amount it does look glittery but from a distance it almost looks wet and it's such a thin formula it's so hard to describe it you like if you can get to a shop and you haven't tried these you need to swatch it to see if you're gonna like it because it's a very interesting formula that's very different to other highlighters it just leaves this sort of 
thin veil of dewy looking glitter on your skin, which might not be for everyone. But if you just use a little bit, okay, I say use a little bit as I'm like piling it onto my face. It looks pretty. A little bit underneath the brow bone, the inner corners and just down me nose. Looking from a distance, I almost just look like I've got a nice wet look, but then you come close and it's like, ah, she's got glitter on her cheeks. Lottie London have launched a mega brow instant laminated look brow shaping wax, which is essentially like soaked brows, which I have been doing so often recently. Since my drag video that I did, I've pretty much completely changed the way that I do my eyebrows. I love a more fluffy brow, and now I look back on some of my old photos. Like I posted one on Instagram the other day that I took a couple months back just because I didn't have any other Instagram photos to post. And I was like, wow, my eyebrows are very bold. But a lot of people commented on my drag video being like, Soph, you need to do your brows like this more often. And as I was watching the footage back, I was like, you know what? I actually really like the like fluffy soap brow. Not quite as extreme as in my drag video, but I do like the fluffy look. So they have a tinted one, which looks like this. And I was trying to swatch these the other day and then I realized that it says on the back that you're supposed to spray it with setting spray or um, water like you would with soap brows. So this is the tinted one which looks a little bit scary. They also do just have the clear one as well. It's got a little mirror, it's in a little compact, and it does come with this tiny little brush, which is quite handy because it is the right shape, but it's very, 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 very small. <laughs> I've just noticed it actually says Lottie London on the side of it in like the tiniest font I've ever seen in my entire life. I should probably try the clear one first, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go straight in and try the tinted one. I'm just gonna use a little bit of the Jake Jamie Tropical Essence Quench tropical quench essence spray and I'm just rubbing the little brush in there this could go horribly wrong oh wow okay that's really um okay this is definitely a very dark brown and I'm a little bit worried I'm gonna get this all over my face it looks quite a warm brown wow that's definitely added a tint to my eyebrows it's kind of scary because normally with soap brows I would sort of use my finger and like press it into my skin I don't want to do that because I don't want to like smudge brown all over my face, you know? So we will use this one just to add a little bit of colour. I do like it though. This one's just a little bit dark. So I'm going to use the clear one over the top of it. Okay, what the hell? Both of those in combination. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I actually prefer this to my brow soap that I've got in the tin because the brow soap almost leaves a little bit of like soapy residue in my brows, but this one isn't as thick. Like the formula isn't as thick. So it goes on quite a lot easier without any sort of lumps. Oh my God, I love it. I love it. I actually love it. And it does definitely feel like it sticks down your brows. So if you don't like that feeling of having like glued down eyebrows, then you won't necessarily like this. But if you want a fluffy eyebrow, you know what? I'm gonna zoom you in. If you want a very fluffy eyebrow, this does that. So I do just want to add in a little bit more definition and shape. And I've got this number seven beautiful, beautiful eyebrow sculpting pencil. I've got the shade brown. So it has a sort of fine tipped triangle point on one side, which actually looks really thin. That looks nice. And then the other side has got a spoolie, which is very handy, although that's a giant spoolie for your eyebrows. <laughs> Let's see if this will actually draw over the top of it. I'm just gonna literally try and draw in a few brow strokes. Okay, maybe my eyebrows do look a bit crazy today. I've gone a bit wild. I did go a bit extreme with the, fluff <laughs> with the fluffiness. Okay, this is the only issue sometimes that I find with brow soap and that kind of thing. Oh, actually. Oh no, it's working at the front of my eyebrow. Okay, it doesn't want to go over the soap, but it's worked fine at the front of my brow. I just want to sort of extend it a little bit. I'm going to see my friends after this and they're going to be like, so what happened to your eyebrows? Definitely not the best brows I've ever done. I don't think they're very even, are they? Like, they are definitely uh, not related today. I'm just going to stop because I'm making them worse. <laughs> to prime my eyes, I'm actually using this, which is the Laura Mercier Brighten and Correct Duo. I've got the shade 2 W. This isn't listed as an eye primer, so Robert, if you're watching this, Robert probably will be watching this because he sent me this palette, which I'll explain in a minute. Just, just don't question me. It looks like quite a good base. I could be completely wrong. Obviously, you should probably use an eye primer, but you get two different shades. So you get a correct shade and then an illuminate shade. That's the correct shade. Oh, and then that's the illuminate shade. They look very similar. 
I guess the Illuminate shade has just got a little bit of shimmer in it, which is a bit odd for a concealer. So I'm gonna use the correct shade just as a base for my eyeshadow because it feels, I don't know, it feels quite similar to an eye primer and it looks like it might do the job. I'm not planning to keep this makeup on for like hours on end, so I'm hoping that this will be sort of okay. Like I mentioned, I do have Robert to thank for my first ever rare beauty item. Somehow he ended up with two of these palettes and he offered one to me, which was so nice of him. He was basically just like, I have a spare. Would you like me to send it to you? Because I know that you can't get rare beauty in the UK at the moment. Like unless obviously somebody sends it to you or you're on the PR list. And so he offered to give me his spare one, which is so nice of him. So thank you, Robert, if you're watching. And if you guys aren't subscribed to Robert Welsh, go over to his channel. He's amazing. I've spoken about him enough times on my channel and you probably already follow him and subscribe to him. So thank you, Robert, for this. Um, my first ever rare beauty item. And I did see this palette. It's the True To Myself eyeshadow palette. I did see it on Twitter and thought it looked really nice. I love the rare beauty packaging and I cannot wait until they do international shipping because then I will do like a full video on it. And then this is what the palette looks like on the inside. First of all, absolutely love the Moon Phases shape. It's a very simple looking palette. It does have a mirror, which is nice. I was a little bit disappointed because I'd seen some swatches online and I was particularly excited about this middle shade however upon receiving it I've realized that this middle shade is actually like a pressed glitter which isn't my favorite because I don't know they're just a bit sort of chunky flaky I thought this was like an amazingly gorgeous soft eyeshadow but it's actually like a glitter like a straight up glitter and I just find that glitter like proper glitter irritates my eyes a bit these days and also you end up with like fallout all over your face so I was a little bit upset by that but you get three mattes in here so this one this one and this one and then two shi uh three shimmers oh wow oh my god that purpley duochrome one is gorgeous. Okay, interesting. So this one, which is this shade here, is like a duochrome gold and pink, which looks pretty cool. And then the other two are much like softer shimmers and not as like in your face. It's just like a basic shimmer, I guess. But then that one is really sort of pretty and sparkly. But then these two are a lot softer. The only thing I can do with this is quite a simple look with maybe a little bit of glitter. I'm gonna start with, you know what? I'm gonna start with this shade, which is like a brown with a slight light hint of red in there almost. Oh my god. Okay, that's creased like nothing else. Don't use that concealer as an eye base. And I'm just gonna put this on. Oh wow, that's really pigmented. What the hell? Was not expecting it to come out that dark. <laughs> I'm just gonna put that on my outer corners. I think I completely even forgot to say that Rare Beauty is Selena Gomez's makeup line, if you didn't know that. So I'm then taking this peach color and I'm gonna use that to sort of blend out these edges. I'm trying to blend those two shades together, but they're not really wanting to actually blend. Okay, what have I done wrong here? Could it be the base that is causing this this issue of those two shades just not wanting to blend and I've just got a big patch of brown? I'm gonna try using a smaller brush to pack on some more of that brown color. It's gone a very odd color. It sort of turned it gray as I mix those two shades together. Now that I'm going back over it, it seems fine and it seems like a very soft eyeshadow, but that was really odd. It sort of just got like stuck in a couple patches. Okay, that's working better now that I'm using a different brush and just gently sort of buffing out the edges. I'm just gonna go back in with that peach shade just here. Yeah, see, this is the thing. Even um, even with this other brush, the peach shade doesn't really want to blend into the other shade. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. I mean, obviously I'm not a professional, but like, it's just not really wanting to blend together. It's more like that brown is just sticking. Okay, I am also just gonna take a bit of that brown under my eyes. Okay, I've definitely gone too smoky with that under my eyes, but <laughs> not a lot can be done about that now. I mean, so far, it's not been the easiest to work with. It could be the base that I put down. It could be that I'm doing something else wrong. If anyone else has tried this palette, please let me know what you think of it. So I'm now just gonna take this shade here. And this looks like the type of shade that's gonna work best on a finger. So, oh my, oh my God. Okay, wow. You know what this reminds me of? Did anyone have that Topshop makeup chameleon eyeshadow from years ago? This is kind of like that. In some lights, it looks pinky purple. In other lights, it looks more golden. There's almost like a bit of a yellowy gold shift in there as well. But oh my God, can you see? 
Okay, well, I mean, that color is pretty stunning. Next up, I'm using a flat brush and I'm just gonna take a little bit of this, um, actually, you know what? Let's go with the slightly pinky toned shimmer, this one. And I'm just gonna take some of that on my brush and I'm just gonna put that on the very inner part. These shimmers are really lovely actually. They're very, very soft and almost like feel buttery. Putting some of that on my lower lash line. I've just noticed that I have sort of messed this shape up, haven't I? It's not very winged. Just to see what it's like, I am just gonna take a little bit of this sparkly color that's like pure glitter. I'm gonna try it on my brush. Okay, my brush is not wanting to pick this up. Like barely anything is coming up on my brush. Okay, I bought a mission. I'm gonna just go in with my finger. I'm gonna take a little bit of that glitter and try and pack it on. Nope, nope, nope half of that has just fallen on my face. It's mostly like stuck to my finger instead of my eyelid. And I think I've just ruined my eyeshadow look. Why is it not coming off my finger? Okay, there we go. That sort of worked. No. Okay, that already feels uncomfortable. Why did I do that? Most of it is just still stuck to my finger and a lot of it is now on my face. Fantastic. Well, that didn't quite go to plan. I don't like these shades. I just don't like the pressed glitter shades. I'm yet to find one. You know what? The Tarty Beauty ones are the only ones that I found that don't just like fall off your eyelids and fall onto your face and like barely stick to your lid. I, I, I just don't really like them. I don't like those type of formulas. It's an all right palette. It's quite nice, but I wouldn't rave about it. I wanted to love it more. I think what would have changed my mind if this shade was just a really pretty foiled eyeshadow? I probably would have liked this palette a lot more. I'm just gonna do some eyeliner. And I've literally just picked up this Lottie London one because I don't have another one to test. This look has gone so wrong and my wings aren't even, they're not matched up with the wing shape of my eyeliner. Breathe, so breathe. I am fully aware that my eyeshadow shape and my liner does not match up and there is a big gap in between and I honestly feel like I could cry because I'm now late for going to see my friends because this video has ended up taking me longer to film than I thought but I'm just gonna breathe I'm gonna put on my mascara this is the Kiko mood boost three in one mascara so there's three different mascaras I think okay there's not there's two but I think the idea is you can sort of layer these up so I am just gonna use I'm gonna go for the volume effect side and see what this can do I love Kiko but some of their mascaras just like barely do anything and others are really nice and it's usually the ones in the limited collections that I really like but this volumizing one is literally like doing nothing yes give us nothing <laughs> Come on, second layer. No, 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 no. Okay, let's try the other side, which is supposed to be the lengthening and curling effect. Let's see if this can do anything better. Okay, well this side is giving me more volume than the volume side did. You know what? This side isn't bad. I just didn't like the other side. Okay, so the final thing is my lips and I'm using the number seven high shine lip crayon in the shade Daydreamer. I don't know why my first instinct was to smell it, but I'm hoping this will give me a really nice glossy natural lip. Okay, it almost feels like a tinted lip balm. I think the colour is a little bit light to the point where it's sort of like settling in the cracks of my lips. Could just be because my lips are particularly dry, but um, it feels nice. It feels very balmy, but I think I would definitely need this with a lip liner. I'm not too sure why I didn't just put a lip liner on with it, but I'm going to do that now. I just used some of the House Laboratories lip liner in Rule. This seems like such an old school Soph look. This is the kind of thing that I would do all the time back in like 2016. This is the finished look. You know what? The base products, I absolutely love. I think the base looks really nice. The eyeshadow palette, I was just a bit disappointed in. I was expecting more from it and I was so disappointed in that glittery shade. I guess the overall look, like it's not too bad. It was more just like the, the way that I applied it is really annoyed me. <laughs> How I just like messed up with the shape of it, but it's whatever. It's one of those days, Um, you know, just me being honest and real with you guys in this video. I didn't want to have to like refilm it because I got so far and then I guess, yeah, that mascara was kind of disappointing as well. The base products, I'm happy with. I really like, I think my favorite thing from this video is the primer, the foundation, and the brow soap stuff. I'm happy with those. Right, I better just give my hair a quick brush. 
Um, it's okay. I'm only 45 minutes late for seeing my friends. Okay, guys, I'm really sorry. I'm not gonna answer a question of the day today because I normally spend like 10 minutes sitting here trying to find one. And I'm very late for going to see my friends. I'm sorry that this video was such a mess. It did, it wasn't supposed to be. I thought that it would be quite a quick one to film, but I actually ended up spending longer filming it than I expected to. I will leave all the products linked down below in case you guys are interested. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I hope you guys are all doing really good and I hope you're enjoying having a little bit more freedom if you're in the UK because on the day that I'm filming this, it is the 12th of April and like pub gardens are open now, shops are back open again. Um, if you are going out, please stay safe and um, yeah, I hope you're all doing good and I will see you in my next video.